In this video, we will talk about estimating limit of quantitation from uh, data in Excel. So we have uh, collected some data uh, using an LCMS MS method, and we have measured the meropenem, which is a broad spectrum antibiotic uh, from blood. So these uh, measurements are ma made so that uh, they would be matrix matched with the samples that will be measured later with this method. So the first thing we should do before estimating limit of quantitation is to see whether this data is um, linear. At first we can plot the calibration graph and see estimated from there whether this data is linear. So we can see that uh, the data points are quite close to the trend line here. So we might presume that the data is linear, but uh, just in case, let's use the absolute residuals too. So to calculate the absolute residuals, let's first uh, use the linest function to calculate some of the parameters of this uh, calibration function. And now we can calculate the residuals. So from this plot, we can see that uh, this data most probably isn't linear because we can see that this uh, there's a curve occurring here. So we should remove this highest calibration level and see what uh, if the data is linear then. So first let's remove this highest calibration level from the linearest function. And then from the plot. Now we can see that the, as the data points vary quite uh, randomly around zero, so we can presume actually that this data is linear and uh, might be homoscedastic as well because the variance standard deviation from the zero seems quite uh, the same on lower concentrations as well as in higher concentrations. So let's calculate limit of quantitation from this data. We will first use the approach uh, that's suggested by ICH. That approach uh, calculate, uses the standard deviation of residuals, which can be found uh, in with the linest function in the lower right corner. This uh, standard deviation of the residuals is multiplied by 10 and then divided with the value of the slope. And then we have a limit of quantitation in milligrams per kilogram because the concentration values that we have used is also in milligrams per kilogram. Now we have made uh, some replicate measurements on one of the concentrations which is close to limit of quantitation so we uh, can estimate limit of quantitation also by another method uh, using the not the standard deviation of residuals the standard deviation of results at a single uh, concentration
So we can see that uh, the second approach does give um, quite uh, higher um, limit of quantitation value. So if uh, in, in this case it might be better uh, to use uh, this value calculated by the second approach because uh, conservative values are better to use. However, uh, in this example, let, let's assume that we have to follow the guidelines, ICH guideline, um, because that's demanded from our laboratory. So you can notice here that actually this data is uh, collected on first day, and we have actually measured the uh, made these measurements also on separate days, five different days. I have already found the linear, linear uh, ranges here and calculated the um, limit of quantitation for each day. And we can add now the first day here as well. And let's multiply it by a thousand. So uh, it would be in the correct um, in correct units. We can see here that the limit of quantitation varies between days quite significantly. Uh, like between day one and day three, the values are seven times uh, different from each other. So uh, in this case, we suggest that you should use the most conservative value meaning that uh, value on day three as uh, the limit of quantitation for this method. So hopefully this video has given you some better understanding of how to estimate uh, limit of quantitation in Excel.